Today we're going to start a new unit. We're actually going to make what's called GUIs. That's G-U-I-S. Graphical User Interfaces. So this is going to take all those beginning programs that we did in the first quarter and now allow us to make it into a visually appealing program. So we'll start off pretty basic. So the first thing I want to do is here's all my folders I have over here. Just in case you haven't, I would suggest you make a new folder now. And the way you do that over here is you hit New, Java Project. I will call this one GUIs, GUIs 2015. And usually the G, the U, and the I are capital letters, the S lowercase. I'm going to hit Cancel because I've actually already created it. But for some of you, you could hit Finish now. On the left, you should see this. Make sure it's highlighted blue. And then I'm going to go New, Class. Okay, I'll call this Example 1. I'm going to cover quite a bit in Example 1. So the first thing you have to do is Extends JFrame. Now, the next is going to be, uh, make sure you import it. Uh, next, you're going to make a uh, main method, public static void main string args. Now, I'm going to glaze over some of the technical stuff here, especially what I'm about to do here is use the title of the program, so example one, you always need that right there, and I'm going to say obj1 for object one, you're actually creating an object, and that's the part I'm kind of glazing over now, we're just using it, new, then the name of the program again, and now you have to have the name of the program and you have to have the word new. OBJ, you get to name it, that's called the object, whatever name, and I usually use something towards the idea of OBJ, or I actually write object one. Then you do OBJ one object dot set visible true. Now, what's different about this one is that's the end of the main method. You are now done. You're now gonna create another method that is the same name as the program. So example one, and that's a special method called a constructor method. And again, hopefully later on this year or next year, we'll get into the idea of what a constructor is and why that's so important to objects. So the first thing we do is super, and this is where how you will get the title to appear on the screen. So title here. Set size, just as we've done before, 400 by 200. Actually, let's make it 400 by 400. Um, I have to look. I'm just going to go back to the previous one. I'm just going to copy and paste it. So here we go. Set default. Set default close operation. JFrame.exon close. That makes sure your GUI actually closes when you X out. So now when you're making a GUI, and if I actually run this now, I'll show it to you. This is what pops up. Here's a GUI. You could put all the different labels and buttons and text fields inside of here. Right now, there's nothing here. Titles up here. Exit. You close. Now we could uh, start off with the basic a J label. So this is when you want something on the screen that the user can't change, manipulate in any way, but all they could do is read. So I'll just put this one label. So this will be the first label equals new J label. And now whatever you want to be in the screen must be in between this quotation. So let's say you said name. Now every time, the first time you use J label, you have to import it from the swing class. And now to put it on the screen, you do add one label. And I've realized right now I forgot to do something right above this. So you have to describe how you want things to appear on the screen, and those are called layouts. And there's going to be three layouts. The first layout that we're going to do is set layout, new flow layout. So a flow layout, after I import it from the AWT class, a flow layout just puts things on the screen left to right when it hits the end it moves down a little so right now I added this in if you actually ran it it says name right in the middle 
Now let's say I wanted to put a place for them to write their name. That would be J text field uh, name field. So this second part where I said one label and now I said name field, that's the variable name, like a string or an int. You can name it whatever you want. I suggest that you pick a name that's meaningful. Something when you look back, you'll understand what it means. So now inside of the name field, a uh, text field that I called name field, and yeah, I want to add it now, you add the variable name field. Now when you do a text field, and there's a few different things here, you run this, on the screen gives you this tiny little box to type in, and I can't uh, even get in, get my uh, cursor in there. Now if you put a, a number in here, so let's say 8, I don't know exactly what the 8 refers to, and you'll hear what I think it is. 8, here, it gives you 8 spaces, and what I say is it always fits about 8 capital W's. So about 8 capital W's fit. So whatever number you put in there, that's about how big it will be. You could also put words in here. So like, you could put name 8. So what will happen is it'll put name inside that text field, but unlike a J label, you'll be able to erase it. So now you could erase it and you could put William. Other things you could do. Well, we could stick a button in here. J button, and let's call this uh, exit button. Equals new J button. And in quotations, what goes in quotations is actually the thing that will appear on the button. The button's name, as far as the program knows, is called exit button. But if you wanted to say exit in the button, you just type exit. And then you do add exit button. And now run this. And you should see now there's a button right here, exit now. You click on it, nothing happens. Because we haven't we haven't told the button you're gonna program it to tell what happens when what happens when they click on this button and this is where you could decide do you want it to be exit do you want to be funny and have an exit button that da doesn't actually exit but does something else I've seen lots of things over the years so that's the beginning part of a GUI and everything else will start from here you will always have a main method and again to stress it this is the name of the program so the name of the program and line 13 are the same Inside of here, the next highlighted part, that's the object. You always do set visible true. And then line 17, the method. This also has to be the name of the program. Those are very key points I'm trying to point out that you might not see a mistake. It might not underline it in red. Eclipse might not tell you it's there, but it's actually a mistake that won't let it happen. That's called a semantical or a logic error. So next time, I'll show you how to make the button active.